Hey guys, it's Poxy Pro. Welcome back to another video. And today I'm gonna go ahead and do kind of like an overview of uh, Zero AD here, which is pretty much kind of like a RTS game. Um, it's pretty similar to Age of Empires, I believe. And um, if you guys don't know what RTS means, it means real time strategy. So it's it's yeah, it, it's a pretty strategic game. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and go over basic like match setup so there's no campaign yet but you know that's all right um it isn't alpha or beta or something like that i think i'm using like version 1.8 i'm actually not 100 percent sure but yeah okay so right here is this is like the most stable bot and if you put us unassigned like the bot like they won't really do anything um here you can do skirmish maps which is like a kind of like a custom map in a way you can make skirmish maps as well then there's scenarios and everything um you know it gives you these set of maps depending on what your filter is the number of players can go all the way to eight and there is multiplayer for this and then you can have map size according to, to a number of players um over here you can choose your factions so yeah this, these are pretty much all the factions now my favorite factions got are probably Romans and Persians. Persians for the archers and Romans because their infantry are, are pretty good. Oh no no sorry not Romans Spartans because I like to use the Spartan like units. Um, yeah Petrobot and then you can select or usually it's on, ran on random by default. So here you can also change that instead of up here. And for AI difficulty, you could sandbox, I think, is like a mix or some sort of random. I haven't really tested that. Very hard. They will, like, destroy you. So if you're new to the game, I suggest either playing on easy or very easy. But if you're experienced with RTS, maybe you, want, might, you might want to try medium. Um, but for the purpose of the tutorial, or not necessarily tutorial, but overview, we're going to put them on very easy. And then uh, we can just go ahead and generate the map here. Yeah, they have like a nice little quote and some information, which is good. Alright, so pretty much each and every game is going to start like this, and you'll usually have an unexplored map unless you change that in the settings. So these people right here that you usually will spawn with are your... Uh, your women, they're like your settlers in a way, they like, they do things much faster, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and make them get wood, we can have one get food as well. Now, uh, they do do things a lot faster than the military guys, which are, which are these people. Um, these are my soldiers. Um, the soldiers, they can build things like barracks and things that are more military based, while the settlers can pretty much build, um, yeah, crop things or how do I say that more like income things like things that give you food or like a storehouse which allows you to upgrade things to collect um, items and materials better so I'm going to get these guys in to build a house now a house is good for population and a barracks are good for upgrading troop things and um, building troops and then um, you can't upgrade everything because a blacksmith is better upgrades right and then here's your civic center or your like town hall, town hall or townhouse, however you guys want to say that. Um, you can pretty much build your troops here, but the barracks give you a little bit more troop options, I think. And this we'll get to a little bit later. Um, so this is your scout. Now with your scout, you can do one of two things, um, in my opinion. You can either use him to not go back to the map, <laughs> to scout out the map. And usually after I get to like a good midpoint of the map or I get a feel of where the enemy is, I usually send them to get food since his mobility allows them to get food really good. Um, so we're just going to like put him like over here maybe somewhere. And he'll go ahead and explore himself. Now um, this button right here allows you to find idle workers but it looks like everybody here is working. Um, another thing to go over is the most important items or materials in the, f in the game that you want to be getting is in my experience food and wood. Because wood is really like important for building stuff, and you also need it for soldiers. And food is like for soldiers a lot. So there's camels here. Um, so let's see. Okay, so I usually come up to like right about this. I don't really go into the territory. Kind of just get a feel of what they're building. All right, they got a house here, and then I'll probably just tell them, all right, let's get these camels. And I'll kind of usually just ignore him for the rest of the game, pretty much. Um, until I need him. So these guys are building up the barrack, and in the house here, you can go ahead and, and get this, which pretty much increases the population by 20%, and your population's up here with all your materials up there. 
So, um, I usually have one person working on stone and one person working on iron. Uh, you don't really need iron until like the third or second stage, I believe. So I'm gonna go ahead and start getting food and I'll put these two to wood. Um, that way we have plenty of resources. Yeah, These guys, I'm gonna go ahead, I usually make my soldiers build stuff, so we can get a field up and running. Um, I'm just gonna put this in random placement here. The more people you have to build something, obviously the faster it builds. And a field can pretty much, you can have five people working on the field and it collects food. So that's pretty good. So these bushes do eventually run out, but the field is infinite. Or, yeah, that's the farm, the field. Uh, so this guy's going over all the way over there, but he's really quick at doing it, just killing those camels and running back, so that's good. Um, so let's see here. I do want to build a little bit of warriors just in case. And if you do hit shift and you left click, that builds by 5. So if I was to sh hit shift left click twice, it builds 10. So stacks by 5 like that. You can do that with most troops unless you can only have one of the troops. And when I do this and it's red, that means I don't have enough resources to build them. So... We pretty much have our scout going. Looks like um, the enemies are actually scouting yeah, some see? stuff. So he might go into combat as the AI does tend to chase you yeah, see? Um, as soon as they make contact. So right here, we might as well go over this. Violent is he kills everything. Anything in his path, he's really hard to like control to back off. He kind of just kills any enemy like that's closest to him. And including settlers and buildings and stuff. Aggressive is he listens to you and he's like in an attack mode. And if you t tell him to target an enemy, he will target them. Uh, defensive, he's usually just trying to, you know, like on the defense side. I'm not sure if it boosts defense stats or anything. Passive, um, he only attacks when he's attacked. And stand ground is he just like stands still in like a defensive pose. And any, but any enemies that come within a certain range, um, he'll murder. So we're gonna go ahead and have him kill this stuff since it looks like there's lots of enemy activity out there. So um, yeah, these yeah, guys see? went immediately to farming, which I don't want. Um, so right here, so a farmstead. No, we want a storehouse. Now a storehouse, the location of the storehouse is yeah, really see? important. Hold well, on, there's yeah, enemies. Um, due to the fact because yeah, see, the I'm enemies or, no, sorry, not the enemies, <laughs> I just got distracted. Um, pretty much when your settlers are like collecting, you know, food and stuff and everything, they'll walk to the storehouse to like put it in there. And um, pretty much you want that so that your settlers have maximum, um, how do you say it, maximum efficiency. So they don't have to walk across the, the um, your base and, you know, try to get to the storehouse to put food down. So it looks like it was a two for one loss here, um, which is pretty good pretty good ratio yeah, so we can go ahead and get these guys back onto farming so we got more food and such and um oh okay so right here is the production and this is pretty much saying your production queue how much it's done and you can obviously tell by the green and that matches as well and sometimes you need to watch your population it'll build it and it'll be like zero percent because your population can't afford to house you know that many people so that can some sometimes happen and sometimes you won't even notice yeah, so that usually they'll go immediately to like random work after the done completing a task so we're gonna go and make him build a farm set as well um we can have his buddies help there you go all right so these guys they eventually start uh you know by end game start getting some good stuff but later on i tend to add more people to help build there uh wood is important so i'm getting that wood we only have 55 um we have them farming so that's good and them getting more food i might want to change okay well we got some warriors All right, i'm gonna make these warriors go chop wood so that they're in the upfront area so that they can defend but also collecting resources um i think settlers either put stuff in here or the storehouse wherever it's closer so that's that's pretty good. So I have them on two areas. Um, I think that's how that works. Uh, all right, cool. So now we got the farm set here, and we can already have upgrades there and upgrades here, which are really important. Now I suggest getting this upgrade, which is the iron axe head, which um, you know increases the lumber rate, which is like the wood and such. So it looks like we're low on wood still. Um, Okay, we're going to build five more settlers to help out there. So this is so far the basic information. I kind of just went over everything um, that's really important for the phase one. Now, after you start building uh, most of the buildings, I need to build one more. Then you're, a you're, you're able to upgrade into like the second phase. And in the second phase, you unlock a whole bunch more buildings and more research capabilities, more military strength, you know, stuff like that, etc. So it pretty much makes you pretty powerful. It also extends your territory by just a little bit. Um, it's a pretty good chunk, it'll probably like extend up to this area, maybe. 
not 100% sure, but yeah. Um, so we can go ahead and click this, and we can see our idle workers, and go get that wood. Um, we could build an outpost. Outposts are pretty good. Uh, they pretty much can build in neutral territory, which is this, because it's not claimed. And they slowly degrade, but um, they're really good at getting vision. It's like a ward in League of Legends. Anyways, um... So, we might want to build more houses since it looks like our population is really close to meeting cap. So, um, yeah, we can go ahead and do that. And in housing, you can upgrade your citizens. I tend to not spend any points in that, um, because instead I'd rather build troops to defend my citizens that rather than upgrading their HP and stuff like that. Yeah, alright, so we still have these guys farming. I think I have military strength still. Alright, and also you can highlight like this by holding down left click and dragging, and then it'll give you like a little list of everybody you've highlighted. So it says here, you know, I have seven warriors, hoplite, and then I have uh, two skirmishers. And then you can go ahead and just yeah, click on that, and then they'll be selected, and you can like use them for combat and such. So that's what, it, what I usually do when they're all mixed and working. I just go whoop, select my warriors, and send them to attack, while the workers c still continue to attack. Now, if it's like a large scale attack, and you really want to limit your workers, uh, death because enemies do kill your workers. Um, you can go ahead and s raise an alert, which will pretty make, uh, which will pretty much make all the workers go into like buildings and stuff so that they don't they won't be killed. And that's usually really good. So my scout did die. Um, I'm gonna go to build one more cavalry guy, and we're gonna send him out. Uh, so it looks like our wood production is on a pretty high rate right now. We got our housing, which is 24 of 30. Uh, oh, it's almost built. Alright, so let's just wait for that, and we should be able to go into the second stage. Oh, we're gonna need more resources. So, uh, yeah, one... See? Okay, so that's building still. Um, yeah, so we're gonna see? go and send our scout, like, right here. To the food, just just for fun. Um, and scout out the way. So this guy's done. Yeah, we can go ahead and get him on wood. Alright, so now that we've built the sufficient amount of structures to move on to the next stage you pretty much want to save and hoard your resources to upgrade as fast as possible because that usually gives you the upper hand now if you know yeah, the enemy is probably going to attack because you can play multiplayer in this then you might want to delay it yeah, because it does eat all your resources in the early stages um yeah, so we're going to go ahead and have this guy and he's scouting up we can go into the territory a little bit deeper just to see how they're building and how many settlers they have now the ai usually build settlers at a like way higher rate than I usually do so it looks like here they have housing um, already three houses uh, they do have a horse guy I'm fine with sending this guy in as a suicide just to scout out so look what is this four houses um, they have their main base and yeah they have a farm looks like a storehouse probably and yeah okay so they're not too bad and they yeah so pretty much your um, civic center does shoot arrows as like a defense so looks like we're in similar shape, uh, he does have a lot of settlers and everything, so. Alright, so right here, I want to increase my lumber, uh, output, so I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade that. That only lasts a little bit for some reason. It seems like it wears off and it will, like, light up again to use again. I'm not sure how that function, uh, works, though. So we have our guys working, lots of guys chopping wood. Uh, 445, 855, uh, I'm gonna start building some military units. Like you see, these guys and these guys are not available here, so that's why it's good to build a barrack. You can also get these upgrades down here. So, requires town phase, right. Um, we need wood, 283 wood. Um, alright, let's go ahead and wait for that. Alright guys, we are back, and so I got enough wood after getting the lumber upgrade from here, so I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade into town phase 2, essentially. Or, actually no, it's just into the town phase, I, I, I don't know what phase I'm in right now, to be honest. <laughs> Alright, so, um, do we have enough to build more troops? No. I predict that they might be attacking me soon, so I am going to just be cautious. And so yeah, so the town phase is going to upgrade, it takes some time, it's not too long, but, um, should be fine, so I, I'll probably just cut to that then. Alright guys, just about that time where my upgrade's about to complete, and just something to mention is, um, I had a whole bunch of regular women workers, uh, moving up and cutting trees in this region. I moved them all to the back, fearing just in case of an attack that they all don't get murdered. So I do still have my yeah, military see? units in the front, so that gives me separation, and it allows me to easy, uh, easier 
distinguish them and prepare them for battle in case of an attack. So, um, it did finish the upgrade, so now we have better troops here. We get, we're, I'm gonna go ahead and build a little bit just in case they do attack me. You gotta always be prepared for that early attack, guys. Now, um, we could use one military guy, let me see. So, they don't really upgrade much, but like, they could build... Uh, towers now um, from second upgrade, which is really good. Towers are really, really good in this game. Yeah, now, right now, uh, these guys unlock a whole bunch of things now. Now they can build a blacksmith, which is something you probably want to construct fast so that you can get those upgrades out. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, after he puts the wood away, I'm going to get him to huh. build that. And we can go in and tell these people to go help build that. So once you get those, uh, the blacksmith upgraded, or not, sorry, up. Um, sorry, not upgraded. Built. Then we can go ahead and start getting upgrades. So now we have more men, yeah, more see? manpower to go ahead and chop wood. Cause I love chopping wood. All right. So those guys are gonna go chop wood. Uh, they're gonna be in the up front just in case a battle starts. Um, no formation. Yeah, if you put them in no no formation, then it, they don't have to take slower and group together. It's just like they walk at all at their movement speed. And I'll go into formations once I start going into combat. And yeah. So that's pretty much going to be it for this video guys, this is probably going to be part 1 of a mini series to go ahead and get people who are new to 080 up on their feet. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and see you guys next time.